Hi everyone, welcome to Zavaras. In this video, we will create a Spring Plus Angular app with basic Spring security. To create a Spring Plus Angular app, we can clone a repository, which is this one. So I have already created a video with all the steps to create this template. I will put the link to this repository and this video in the description. If you want to know how to create this template, you can view the video or you can just follow me and clone the repository. So let's clone the repository now. Click on this code and I will copy it. Let's open terminal. I will create a directory called Spring Angular Security and I will go into this directory and I will make this a git repository. So I can say git init. This directory has been marked as a git repository. You might see some warnings here, but you don't need to worry about that. Now let's clone that repository inside this directory. So I will git clone and the URL of the repository. So it's cloning the repository. Now let's rename this Spring Angular Frontend Server to just Frontend. I can say MV this and Frontend. Now if we see inside front end, we can see there is a folder. There is a folder called dot git because front end is already a GitHub repository. So we will delete this directory because Spring Angular security is already a GitHub repository and we don't want to have another git repository inside that. So let's remove this dot git directory rm rf and then frontend dot git. Now let's go to the frontend directory and run the frontend application. I will go to frontend and here there is a file called readme.md which has instructions to run the application. So we can read those if we want cat readme.md and you can see to run the application in the local machine we need to run this command. I will copy this command and paste it here. Now if you run this for the first time it will take some time because it needs to install node and npm. It needs to install, install many npm packages and maven dependency so it will take some time for the first time now the app is started and you can see the tomcat is running on port 8080 let's verify if the app is working or not go to a browser and open this url localhost 8080 so you can see we are able to see this angular app that means the front end app is working now let's stop the app using control c and add some security to it to secure the app we can add a spring security dependency in pom.xml file so this is the dep dependency so this is the documentation i will put the link to this documentation in the description but before that i don't want to run this app on port 8080 i want to run this on port 8081 so first let's uh, configure that if you want you can open this project in an id but i won't do that because we are not uh, doing any major coding in this video so i will just open the file so the file which we need to open is application.properties so there we need to change the port of the server 
फाइल से विम आर सी मैन रिसोर्स एप्लीकेशन डॉट प्रॉपर्टीज नाउ हियर आई विल एड दिस प्रॉपर्टी सर्वर डॉट पोर्ट एंड इट्स वैल्यू विल बी विच एवर पोर्ट वी वॉन्ट आवर एप्लीकेशन टू रन ऑन सो आई वॉन्ट द एप्लीकेशन टू रन ऑन पोर्ट एट जीरो एट वन सो आई विल पुट एट जीरो एट वन हियर and i will save the file now the next time we run the app the server will run on port 8081 instead of 8080 so 8080 is the default server port if you don't specify anything it will be 8080 now to install the spring security we can go to this documentation so i will put the link in the description and since we are using spring boot with maven so we will go to this section and here it says that for spring boot with maven project we need to add this dependency only so let's copy this dependency and we need to put this in pom.xml file let's open pom.xml file here so i will just open it in the here only if you want you can open this project in id and you can modify the code there as well i will open pom.xml file now here if you see in the dependencies tag we already have some dependencies the first is is spring boot starter web which is required to make this a web application there is another dependency which is is spring boot starter test which is required for testing now we will put the copied content after is spring boot starter web dependency you can put it anywhere i will put it after is spring boot starter web dependency i will paste the content here now that's done now now we have added dependency in the pom.xml file but we need to tell maven to fetch the dependency so if you use an id so your id may automatically fetch the dependency or in the intellij idea there is a uh, there will be an icon with am you can click on that icon there and it will download the dependency if you are using terminal first of all make sure the java version of your terminal and your pom.xml matches which means if i say java version here it is 17 and in the pom.xml in the pom.xml the this in the property java dot version is 17 so they both should be same is you can use maven compile command which is m v n w compile now as you can see it is downloading all the required dependencies so it will take some time so it has downloaded all the dependencies after downloading them it's doing some uh, it's doing a maven build and we can see build success so that means maven has downloaded the required dependency now let's rerun the app so i will just go ahead mbnw spring boot run so this will again you know download you know, node npm and all the npm packages but since that part uh, we have already downloaded so it won't take any time and it will just build angular app and it will start our server so our server has been started now let's go to the url localhost 8080 you can see we see this site can't be reached because we have modified the port 
now you can see tomcat is started on port 8081 because we have specified this in application.properties file so we need to go to port 8081 and we see a login page just by adding the spring security dependency uh, we are getting a page to log into our app now let's put here username so the default username for spring security is user and the password you can see in the console in the console you can see this line using generated security password is this so this is the password copy it and i will paste it here sign in you can see uh, we can see the angular app but this password will change each time we run the app so if we stop the server and start it again then this password will change but if you want to use only one password then you can do that in application.properties file so let's go to application.properties file so first stop the server and I will say vim and application.properties file and here I will add another property which is called is spring dot security user password and I will I can say pass you can modify the username as well spring dot security dot user dot name so this is the default username so let's say I will say Javaras and pass I can say pass so now the username will be Javaras and password will be pass so I will save that and run this application again So this time you don't see any line the default password because we have modified the default password and the server is on port 8081 if we refresh it we need to log in because we have changed the username and password so the previous user with the username user and password that long string is no longer valid so we need to sign in with different username and password username is java hyphen rs password is pass sign in and we can see the angular app working fine so that is working so we are able to log into the app using java rs as username and pass as password now let's try to understand what is going on in the browser now i will open this link in uh, incognito window so that i am not already logged in I will right click, click on inspect and then the network tab and here so I will expand it I will click on preserve log and now I will go to localhost 8081 now you can see first we have we have few requests here first request is to localhost If we click on this localhost the status code is 302 that means redirect the user to another URL and in the response headers we can see the location the location is this one that means our browser will redirect us to different location which is localhost right on login and we can see that in the this search bar here so the second request is to this location at one and login and status code is 200 that means everything is working fine and then we have some CSS here bootstrap CSS and sign in CSS so this is just to you know 
add some styles to this username, password, and sign in button. This page, login page. So that being said, now let's clear this network log. Put the username here and password here. Click on sign in. Now you can see again we have some request. First request is to login. So the request URL is this login. But this time we are sending some payload as well. So in the payload username is java hyphen dot rust. Sorry, username is java hyphen rust and password is pass. We are also sending one underscore CSRF token. So we will discuss that in the upcoming videos. So in the header, the status code is 302. That means send the user to different location. And which location? The location is this one. You can see in the response headers, this is a field code location which is localhost 8081. Now, apart from that, if you see in the response headers, there is a field called set cookie which is json id equal to this one that means this is the cookie which is being sent from the server now whenever server see this cookie in any upcoming request it will be able to recognize that this request is coming from the same user and it's http only so our javascript code won't be able to read this cookie but this cookie will be sent in um, send in all the uh, next requests to the same server so now the next uh, request is to localhost 8080 and here in the request header we are sending cook one cookie here so this is the same cookie like 422 uh, which was coming here 422 4214 so we are sending the same cookie and server by seeing this cookie server is able to recognize that this is the same user so it allows us to access its protected resources and then the server sends these CSS and these JavaScript files which are nothing but our angular app so uh, and once the these are all these javascript and css files are in the browser then the angular app takes effect and it all works so that's how the basic security works in spring boot with single page application obviously this is nowhere close to the solution we want in the next videos we will continue improving the security let's meet in the next video please like and share this video and subscribe to my channel. Bye everyone.